So then we have actor name, which is just referencing the second table data element in this page, uh, well, in the t uh, table row, which, if you drill down, is actually what you want to uh, access because there's a Oh, the first table data element is the picture itself, and I didn't want to access that, so I'm accessing the second one for the name, and then um, I'm accessing the fourth one and the div element for the character name, which is right here, and that's the fourth one because the third one is the ellipses, um, and then there's a sub div element inside of there, so I want to get rid of that, um, and I don't think I'm uh, actually stripping out the anchor tag just because uh, not every character, such as this one, has an anchor tag in it. So that would actually make it so that there would be blank spots in the return data, which is not what I want. So I didn't do that. And then finally, once it's done creating a cast element, it appends it to the cast member array, which is in the items, which I've, you know, been building up uh, over all these different functions. Um, then the second function, technical details, um, is going over uh, all the stuff in this section of the page, which unfortunately doesn't follow that same item prop uh, kind of specification. And since it doesn't do that, it makes it a little trickier to figure out how to map that data um, in a useful way. So I've done you know a little bit of trickery in making that work. So it's first of all finding the title details uh, ID with no particular root node, like it could be a div, could be a span, could be a table for all it really matters. But it's finding that ID because that ID should be unique, and then it's finding the sub element which is a div which I can show you is uh, this div class text box um, which is containing each one of these elements and it's looping over each one of those because each one of those could potentially have useful information and it's um, then extracting this element which I've called title details and that's an h4 and all that really is is these headings so like country uh, official site language, release date, etc., etc. Each of those is contained in an H4, and I was thinking, you know, the only real way I, I know of to make sure that I'm getting the right data per field um, is to actually do a check uh, for each loop. I'm saying, hey, in this, um, it's it's first of all checking to see if that text actually exists, if it doesn't, doesn't do anything. If that text does exist, it's calling the self map uh, film details function, which is what I defined down here. And it's basically doing uh, a big if check. So it's like, hey, if this heading is equal to language, uh, this is the mapping for it. And it's adding that to an item. Uh, if this uh, title detail is equal to a budget or gross or any of these things, um, map it. And that's all it's really doing. So, you know, it it may very well be that it's not actually existent in, in this list at all, and that's totally fine. Um, but that's really what it's doing, it's just mapping uh, per element, since there's not really any, a unique uh, identifier for budget or for um, the country or the language, like all of them are just within this kind of um, generic div with a class of text box and then an H4. So that's my kind of tricky, clever way of uh, mapping. Um, there may be a better way of doing it, I'm not really sure. I just kind of thought that was one way of doing it and it seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm then for each element that I'm mapping, I'm doing this uh, function call, which is if not empty, get index. That way, um, I'm. it's the same thing as doing uh, this right here, 
but I'm first making sure that that element isn't empty so I don't get like a out of, uh, uh, array index doesn't exist uh, error because that does happen if one of these actually doesn't return any sort of data which is possible um, but the one exception of that is this aspect ratio element I'm actually accessing the first or the second array index um, because I think I can show you let's see aspect ratio um, oh yeah so the first uh, element in it is this C full text specs for whatever reason I'm not sure why that's in the same block doesn't make any sense to me but it is so I'm skipping over that and, and I'm pretty sure that's consistent among all the movies in this at least in this top 200 list so it seems to work pretty well um, let's go back to this the last thing I wanted to mention in this part of uh, the system is I'm um, using this index that I'm getting from this right here. Um, see, I'm passing it in uh, as a parameter. I'm using that index as um, the, well, I, I think I can actually better explain it if I just copy the xpath for this. Um, let me paste that in here and just show you what I'm dealing with. Um, so you see how it's div element 11 for, I think that was for aspect ratio, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, that is the index, the 11 is the index. Um, and, re and, and I'm actually incrementing that one by one because this is zero indexed. When you start uh, looping over an array, it starts at zero and then goes one, two, three, etc. Um, but with xpaths, it starts at 1 instead of 0, so I'm incrementing it by 1, and that's why that's uh, happening right there. And, and that's the way you can access a um, big block of data without seemingly any sort of unique identifiers. That's one way of doing it. I'm not sure if you know that's a particularly best practice -y sort of thing, but it seems to work. All right. Um, I I'm pretty sure I've covered this pretty well. Um, if you guys have any questions about uh, the spider itself, let me know. Um, if I skipped over anything or went through something too fast and didn't explain it well, let me know. And I'll do my best to help you guys out. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I covered that uh, to the best of my abilities at this point. Um, let's move on to the pipeline.